All right, today I have this one over here. I just add the watch in this case over here just so that I could make a proper unboxing of the video. Before we get to that, as always, a quick intro. Hello everyone, this is G-Shock High Fashion Channel and welcome to another G-Shock unboxing review video. Today we're gonna have a look at this full metal G-Shock watch which I already showed you guys a glimpse of before but in this video will be another proper unboxing review video for this exact model. This is my first MRG G-Shock watch. Just a quick run through on the back story. This watch over here is uh, was released in 1999. You can look at it in this perfect bubble over here if you own one of this to page 72, somewhere over here. Basically in the middle of that very year. The reference number for this exact model is the MRG-1100-22 code stands for the colorway blue so that's why you want to see some blue accents on the watch face of this very model over here this is indeed an mrg series and they actually include this into the frogman family and that's why i'm wearing this one over here a titanium frogman g-shock watch one of the most hype of and i believe very very rare unlimited model out there a lot of people try to copy this though like they swap the basic one such as this guy over here look at it you got this and they uh, customized the band bezel, the customer all the way to the LCD place in there. I mean, it's still not the same thing, man. This is like the titanium. The, the thing that makes this series special compared to the basic stainless steel model is the material itself. You can't just paint the watch and make it look the way it is. You just can't. You just need to replace the whole thing and make it titanium instead. And then you'll be able to feel the joy of owning this awesome piece. And now, Today we're gonna have a look at another titanium frogman, which is surprisingly not as expensive as this one over here. This model was retail at seventy thousand yen, and then again, this model is fully titanium as well. Although I could uh, understand it, include I'm pretty sure this part is uh, stainless steel. Some parts are stainless steel, but the whole casing, the body, and also the watch band, all these metal links over here are titanium instead of stainless steel. A full metal G-Shock watch, I'm, I'm pretty sure just beginning to sort of like being a trend lately due to the release of those uh, really awesome, what is it, the Bluetooth 5000 series full metal model, I mean everyone just go crazy about those models, and you know what, this one is much better, it is titanium man. A metal G-Shock watch that is also titanium, which means it's pretty lightweight, I mean not as uh, lightweight as this guy over here. This is like 75 grams. This one over here with full links, if you've got this brand new, it's gonna weigh you about 130 grams. But obviously you could remove the links depending on your wrist size and all those, and then gonna end up being a lighter in weight. Or you could just remove the watch band uh, totally and then add this on a, I don't know, Zulu strap, nano strap, put an adapter on that. Although I don't think it's gonna be a, a good idea because if you look at the construction of this model, God, this thing is just different, just different. And again, this is a man, MRG. MRG is one of those high-end G-Shock watches, uh, even back in the 90s. I don't think back in the 90s we have, yeah, we don't have any Master of G at all back then, right? We have those high-end models, but we don't have those Master of G term just yet. So probably this is the Master of G of the 90s, but now MRG have become a higher level than the Master of G kind of this. This is just a Master of G. This is MRG. Although it is an MRG series, but they made this to, yeah, just to be a Frogman G-Shock watch. And that's why you guys can tell that the shape is asymmetrical. Look at that. We have a flat part over here and curve outward parts like so on the sides and that is indeed a really really obviously to be an iconic look of a frogman g-shock watch similar to this guy this is the model that made the frogman series very popular if i'm not mistaken this is the basic gwf-1000 series model and since a lot of people are really liking this castle g-shock decided to release this one over here because this one is much more lighter in weight compared to this so if you are collectors i really recommend you guys to get one of these instead a gwf T dash, I'm sorry, a GWF dash T 1030E. Yeah, this is the lightning yellow. You could get the burning red, I'm sorry, the rising red version that kind of looks much better in my opinion. But 
it's all up to you guys. And you know what? Done with this uh, MRG 1100. Actually, we don't have much information in this magazine. If you want to learn more, you really, really need to check the uh, the details on G-Shock Japan website. I already show you guys how to do so as well on my previous G Vlog video. So go check them one out. So I do a little bit of reading because you rarely find this up there. This model was released in 1999, making this like two decades old, and not a lot of people are familiar with this. And also. I mean the model number are the same as the, the usual reference number as well. This is MRG 1100. Not a lot of people are gonna be accidentally stumble upon this and found it to be a fragment as well. And also this model over here is the only colorway or the only watch or the only MRG fragment out there that is existing that I know of obviously. I'm not sure if there are any like an alternate version of this out there but I believe this is it. this is the only MRG fragment yet and that makes this watch very very rare and sought after especially if you're looking for this in a pristine condition like the one I got. I mean they still have a scratch in there. I mean this is a full metal model. What do you expect? Uh, scratch is inevitable you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's go back to this hard case, the body first. This is not the usual G-Shock watch. I'm not sure if you guys could tell yet. Just look at the hard case. There are no screws. There are no screws. I mean, the body is actually the hard case. There are no bezel. Is that even a thing, right? Wait. This model here has a bezel. This yellow part is the bezel. If you remove this, and then we're gonna have a look to the hard case that is in uh, DLC coded to black. Or IP process and the IP process and also DLC coded. This guy over here is this sort of something like this, but without the bezel. So that's why it looks more smooth. Although they still have this some sort of protection for the buttons and all sides and all those. But this is sort of like a hard case, just a hard case. So there are no screws for the bezel, none of those. Just straight away two buttons popping out on this side and two buttons popping out on this side over here. I'm pretty sure this is a mid-sized button so they are pretty big as well. Very very cool looking and that makes this watch looking really sleek compared to this type of Frogman or any other Frogman G-Shock that was released up to date as well. Although it won't be uh, slim because look at the thickness. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are just almost the same thickness but this watch pretty thick as well. I'm pretty sure one of the reason because of this ring at the top over here. We need this ring over here to protect the dome glass over there. Let me try to show you guys what I mean. Look at that. The glass on top here is mineral glass, not sapphire just yet, but it is a dome shape, unlike the usual model. It's just flat glass. This watch is very, very new to me. I've been wearing this for over two weeks, and yet there are a lot of surprises. Things that I didn't see coming, things that I just realized as I'm wearing it daily, things like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it to you guys. It's just very, very interesting. But just in case you are wondering what this watch could do compared to the Frogman that we got today, the function is very, very basic. Then again, remember, this guy was released 20 years ago, back in the 90s or the early 2000s. G Shock watches don't have a lot of those fancy functions like this one or this one or any watches at all so keep that in mind don't compare this to the new release model though this is 20 years old of technology so at home time we're gonna have a look at day of the week date and time displays very very nice since the glass is dome shaped you guys could see that it's sort of like in a way it magnifies the display and makes the writings in there looks even bigger than it actually is and that is really really awesome if you press mode once it's gonna enter at the site where it probably act like a world time this is a popular site for people to go diving there are 10 of these in here you can cycle through all of them hawaii and japan Mauritius, maldives red sea tahiti and all those good places and the times of the specific location up here will your local time i will talk about more in the uh, model demonstration video which i will be talking about soon as well in this video we're just gonna run through what the function of this model have site and then we have id name passport number and all those and we have three alarms including signal and we have a countdown timer, 1 over 10 precision, and a stopwatch, 1 over 100 precision stopwatch. That is very, very cool. And go back to home time. And obviously, as a diver watch, we gonna need to have a dive timer. Press and hold. Get this ring over here. They actually mentioned how to use it. Hold down dive mode. So if you hold this mode button down here, 
you will enter the dive mode over here it is sort of like an unstoppable timer look at that you cannot just stop it accidentally so that's very cool almost like when you're operating the ring on the swiss watches for the dive timer ring up there so that's a similar thing but in this case in digital if i'm saying this is not solar model right if, if you look at a face plate it have some sort of the sunburst a blue effect almost like it is a solar panel but i don't think this watch is solar at all it's just uh, beautifully made in blue colorway it's not solar panel but if you look at the watch face man it's very, very beautiful look at the mrg uh, logo as well right on top they're very nicely done in at incredible details in metal as well so it's very interesting to see one of these and the price is weird it's just seventy thousand yen this one over here is double the price of this at retail I don't know, it's just very, very interesting. And if you look at the, at the full, the new full metal GMWB5000, that thing costs uh, 60,000 yen at retails, and that is look, stainless steel, right? This is 70,000 yen at retail, and this is full titanium. The only part that is glossy, I'm left to be this ring on top here, just to cover the glass and the second layer around it in blue i'm pretty sure this is ip plated to blue colorway very beautifully made this part really highlights the bezel top here how much if this even the bezel i don't see what to call this but i'm pretty sure that's the the mode indicator for this model look at the wash pan the links are gloss on the sides the top part is brush finish hairline uh, vertically. It's very beautifully made as well. It looks, I mean, since it is titanium, the colorway is just different compared to when you brush finish a stainless steel model. You guys could tell the difference just from the colorway alone that something is stainless steel and the other one is uh, titanium. For example, this guy over here, we have a huge gap over here between the first lock to the first link of the watch band. And they also lock in a different manner as well. I do not know what to name this, but the locking mechanism is totally different. I'm gonna add a close-up photo for you guys to have a look uh, up close and judge by yourself what is this type of locking mechanism that they use to lock the first link to the look. The rest are were just standard bars that you're gonna be uh, locking a lot of watch band out there. And one other thing that I like about this type of watch band is it's full solid not uh, empty links they are solid links and i like how the shape of on the top of it as well so it looks very very beautiful it complement to the bezel i mean the bezel looks more like curvy but we have some sort of similar shape the, this look region over here down part and it matches very well with the whole links and the shape this goes huge to small just like the usual g-shock rock man watch like this guy real look at it look at how it's shaped i mean let me check look at that look at the shape over here it just tapered all the way down onto the tip over there this guy similar thing it's going big over here smoothly and just going back small over here it's just beautiful man it's just very very beautiful and one other thing that i just find out as i'm wearing this is that you could extend the watch pan on here for like a centimeters or two centimeters let me remove this thing over here and just show you guys uh, how this thing gonna wear on my wrist right away right so i'm gonna be wearing this like so uh, just a single to push uh, foldable clasp uh, mechanism very simple but really really solid build everything is made by g-shop and we have a g-shop mrg at the bottom part this link over here is very very nice all right so this one here has already been set up to my wrist side Just sits very, very nice. The sizing is great. Although the thing about this model is that it is so thick, it looks like a UFO just parking on my wrist over here because of how the weird round shape of it. Because I'm not used to it. But look at that. I'm not sure if people are able to tell that this is an MRG Frogman just at a glimpse, unless you have a really experienced eyes, and then yeah, you, you probably have a rough idea already. But anyway, let me show you guys one more thing. And that is about the bottom layer of this watch band on this very model. I read it up from Casio G-Shock Japan website and it did state that they add some sort of layer at the bottom of this watch band over here called the antimicrobial treatment. 
it acts like a layer where it prevents a growth of moss or germs or any sort of uh, things that you don't want to be sitting on your watchman since you're gonna be sweating a lot and you're also gonna be swimming into the lake or into the ocean it's gonna stick a lot of tiny growth down here look at all the details and all the hairline finish as well definitely something gonna stick in there so they add that coating down here to prevent all that and that makes this watch band very, very interesting compared to other metal watch band out there although i cannot tell if that treatment or that coating is still on top of this or not because i cannot see it i just read it out also do not know at which point where the treatment was applied either just on the bottom layer or all the way to the sides or all the way into all this gap over here look at all this gap as well look at how this part is bigger than the rest this definitely gonna provide some insulations when you wear this watch band as well so looking very very good notice that's base titanium to pan down there as well it's very very neatly done and also look this part down here i have a 15 centimeter scrum from wrist so if i want anyone else to try to wear this uh that have a bigger wrist uh, all i honestly is just unlock this two thing over here look at that we have an extensive part about two centimeters extra look at that. a very very cool simple mechanism that was built into this uh, clasp over here that you can unlock it and you're gonna release this to uh, extendable size. Casio made this so that you could wear this watch over your uh, diving suit. Look at that. Look at how much gap it's gonna give me right now. Look at that. It's pretty huge though. It's really huge. If I'm gonna be wearing a diving suit, I could just wear right away. No worry at all. I could just extend the watch band and then slap this watch on. Done. And then when I've done with my diving, which I'm not a diver though, but I'm just assuming as I am. When I'm done diving, I could just lock it back into place like so clip it over here and watch the yeah use the watch as the usual g-shock watch look at that fits very very nice barely any gap at all down here you can still wear full metal watch and you don't have to like re-edit links each time you want to go diving because you, you know that diving is just pretty thick right so here it is very comfortable watch band very it's not as lightweight though it's still 100 grams so it's gonna be still pretty heavy but the size is nice the whole thing is nice. The watch band looks very, very beautiful. You can watch it at every angle, man. Just look at that. My goodness, very, 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 really worth the price. I would really recommend you guys to go to the links in the description box down below. There is links to uh, Samurai Barrier, one of the sponsors of the channel. So show them some love. Go to the side. If you're living outside of Japan, this is the way that I would suggest you guys to get your G-Shock all the way from Japan. Place your bid from your Japan auction through their uh, Samurai Buyer auction service and then they will they will ship the watch to wherever it lives let me remove this and just show you guys one of the things that i almost forgot to show that is the lighting on this space it's just featuring an electroluminescence lighting which is in green colorway similar to most g-shock watch but this guy also comes in green right yep the basic model of this also comes in electroluminescence in green electroluminescence somehow much more uniform much more easy to the eye pleasing to look at at night time or any time of the day so it's very very nice as well look at the back plate from the sides you cannot see that we have this gloss finish ring over here this is i'm not sure what this thing is but it looks like it is a protector for the back plate because the surrounding is protecting the ring the casing down there so that's very, very interesting i've never seen anything like this before look at the new release g-shock fragman this the back leg just popping up upwards like so no protection at all but then again this is just stopping up already but you know right that this is a titanium model but they still add a protection ring up here look at that very beautifully made even they have some shapes on it slanted a little bit flat at the top it's just gorgeous just gorgeous back leg features similar style of the usual uh, 90s release G-Shock Frogman watches or frog carrying those uh, tank at the back and also those rocket uh, thrusters similar style backlit like the, the, the triple sensor Frogman model so it's very very cool and we have this Casio 2036 MRG1100 Japan A titanium water resistant to also 200 meter and do not open service and all those and we have a batch number up here for 704320 if you have something like this, you might gonna have the batch number that's not the same as this. But this one is the MRG. This is one 
that's mine. Alright, that's done over here. I don't think I missed anything, right? But if I do miss anything or if you want to know more about the watch, you can just leave your questions in the comment section down below. I'll just answer right away to you what your concern is. And that is it. This is all an in-depth review for this MRG 1100 series G-Shock watch, a vintage model that's I'm pretty sure uh, still a classic piece, still relevant up to date because it is full metal and also it's pretty small size as well so keep that in mind and that that's it guys please leave a like if you found this video useful informative and entertaining as well for your future g-shock hunting experience go look for this in japan i'm pretty sure this this model was only available in japan go look it up it's totally gonna worth the price totally gonna worth your box and that's it. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time watching this long video that I'm just made over here. So I really, really appreciate your support. This is G-Shock High Fashion Channel. And I'm um, out.